prologue, the figure approached the military checkpoint. It scrambled slowly at first, but then sensed or saw the soldiers watching it. A dark, a grey brown skin helped to hide its features in the dark. A power was out, the soldiers were on blackout orders. A one in charge saw the figure and barked it to stop. The loud voice seemed to attract more attention. A bare feet of the figure sloped against the pavement of the road. The radio cracked loudly. A muffled command clear to engage, bellowed from the faraway officer. Three the uniform checkpoint agents pulled their triggers in sequence and three piercing cracks and shots echoed around the tall buildings of the city. The figure continued to approach more quickly now. They could hear erratic explosions of growing breath. It clicking and gnashing its teeth loudly and wet slabs, slaps of its steps, sped on to a quick shuffle. Soldiers seemed confused, looked to the leader for guidance. Their warm breath puffed visibly into the cold air, and the men that had a Humvee charged the lever back and forth to the mounted vehicle machine gun, reverberating sound. Three more figures exited a side and he had followed the same path as the first. Questions asked and to the radio went answered. When unanswered, the young uniform men and the woman began to fear the half naked figure, still approaching it with its ungainly gait. Unsteady gait. The discipline kept them firing in panic. They looked at their leaders for guidance, who fidgeted with uncertainty. Suddenly, three or four blocks further along the road and checkpoint was occupying. More walking figures appeared. They looked like men and women, but all stumbled. Long rambling, mindlessly attracted to the noise. Checkpoint. More and more merged into hold. From side to side, they all walked slowly forward, dozens. One of the soldiers discharged his rifle, second time, in the, in the, at the lead figure. This time they saw the creature's arm. Sat back from the import back. It didn't show him, despite his injury. Blood ran from his torso and began to stain a grey-looking sweatpants, black in the dark night. His left arm swung uselessly from its side. Now they could see the gnashing jaws and teeth. No sound came from its mouth, as it came within ten feet of the soldiers. No orders came. No sound came from the radio at all. The lieutenant dropped the radio handset or pulled out a sign arm. He wired, fired wildly at the approaching creatures. The panic shots did nothing to slow any of the shamblers. His pistol emptied the remaining soldiers followed his lead and started firing unrestrained into the approaching mass. Each rifle fired until it was, until it was empty. Some of the closest figures dropped to the ground, but surfaces and panic grew to fear as the rounds did little to slow their approach. Mem- muscle memory from thousands of hours of training took over them with fine motor skills soldiers. So they each unloaded, reloaded and continued to engage. One creature was hit, and he struggled to stand and kept falling into a growling puddle of slick mud around it. Several more rollers had faulted back into the step towards the humans. One of the rifle shots exploded the forearm of a figure, but did not and that did not join the growing crowd. More and more continued to join the mass, and in the now crowded street, hundreds, the figure was hit, but seemingly steeled its resolve, came stepping towards its target. The closest soldier to it was standing behind a concrete construction barricade, turned slightly to the left, firing wildly into the crowd. The grey-skinned figure raised its uninjured arm and grabbed at the soldier's helmet strap. With inhibited strength, it yanked the soldier's head down and bent across the barricade. Bent him across the barricade. Man screamed as rolled, a wet gurgle, as the soldier bit into the front of his neck. Screams and yelling proceeded, they rapped on the unit. The mounted machine gun rattled, then went silent as the gun was untaken by three climbing attackers and biting teeth. The echo of guns, funny clatter, bounced around the skyscrapers into a frenzied horde. Part 1 Chapter 1 Clendenness Confronting 
water began to rise again. The tension of Morley's argument. The ordinary Morley quickly evolved into tough territory, as did most Sundays lately. Five or ten minutes at loan was the easiest way to mentally cleanse the rarities of the world. The speakers blast out and distracting music and echoed round the tile of the room. The lyrics are barely audible. From his head in the st- was in the stream of water. Oh, a stream is threatening my life, very face life today. If I don't get some shelter on the air, I'm gonna fade away. A little fist pounded loudly at the bathroom door, insistent and sharp and knocking with his efforts and reminiscent of the conversation that turned into resentment and anger prior to the retreat to the soldier. Da! little voice yelled, knocking before pounding and yielding. The normal clicked back and forth rapidly, then the knocking continued with new fury. Oh, children, it's just a shot away. It's just a shot away. Can ran his hands through his hair a couple of times to drive the soap and warm water away from his eyes and mouth. He knew he didn't, uh, if he didn't answer now, and angry his wife rejected towards him. This morning, with knots aside from it with his sons, very frowning on the bathroom door, so he reached down and stopped the water. He set the coat inside and started to dry himself with a towel. His son would have heard the water shut because the primary seemed even more frantic. Kane began to reach forward and clicked the lock. The door he flew open and banged the young father on the side of it and flinched and dropped his towel. The 18 year old son, Daniel, rushed into the small room. Privacy, please, Canyon, it exclaimed as he bent over and tried to pick up the towel back up. Daniel was instantly standing on it, fiddling with a toilet paper roll. The naked father tried to push him gently to one away so he could free the towel and gain his modesty. What do you need, son? he asked. Nee, he da. A boy was on the office. He stayed on the towel, nudging him back. It's his father's gentle push. Isha suddenly appeared in the door frame. Her eyebrows lowered as she spied the scene. What's the world are you doing? she asked her husband. He was, a, he was bent halfway forward on a hand on the little boy's head and have a hat. On the trap towel, his fashion came cold and worried. He hadn't wanted to rest- he didn't want to restart the argument. They were having before the shower. Rape, murder, just a shot away, just a shot away. Rape, murder, just a shot away. It's just a shot away. What are you listening? What are you listening to? She added, Asia raised much more traditionally than her husband, did not recognise much rock music, less classic rock from several decades ago. Canen stopped pushing Daniel and reached over to stop the offending song. Nothing in just the random rock station. Can you get him off at my towel? Canyon snapped. He decided to control. Continue on but now. It would be disarmed, uncomfortable and irrational. Asia stared at him tight-lipped for a few moments and apparently decided he was pushing him further his vulnerable potential. He picked, she picked Dan, Daniel up and left Canyon alone in the bathroom. He took a few moments to quickly brush teeth, comb hair and beard, finish drying, hang the towel up, walk out of the bathroom and into the small bedroom closet. Canyon and his family lived in a monastery, the small free bedroom house in the outskirts of San Antonio, Texas. He bought the house while Anisha was pregnant with their only child. At the time, Canyon was a full-time position of a supply sergeant. They had caught his company in the nearby Army National Guard unit. He wasn't, he was, he wasn't even a sergeant by rank when he took over the position. He was a corporal and selected the job. A bit lucky to fill the, the open full-time role for the unit. Great position for him. Paid well and had lots of benefits for his family. He would take a lot of personal time for his wife during pregnancy and use his, uh, act, his active duty status. 
to qualify for mortgage to the home. Unfortunately, a few months after I moved into the home, a false reduction order came down and the Kane's position were combined with a ministry of The same month Daniel was born, Kane was allegedly discharged from the military.